Welcome everyone. Today I'm here with Lian Guyen, one of the maintainers of Visero, which is a toolkit for creating data visualization applications that sit on top of Dash. Lee created this beautiful visual vocabulary dashboard that you're going to see in a couple of minutes, which contains a collection of plotly charts and sample Python code to generate these charts. Now, I'm really excited about this um, dashboard, the visualization that Lee created, because um, I wish I had this, honestly, when I first started, like knowing um, what when I have a data set, what chart to use, uh, what are the possibilities, what makes sense. Uh, I didn't have, uh, I didn't study data visualization in university. And so this kind of toolkit or guide is something that I would really have benefited, benefited from. So Lee, thank you so much for creating this and thank you for joining us. Um, welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Um, so I know that this this idea you share this also on the Plotly form. Um, this came from from a different like uh, article or something else that you read. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yes, for sure. Um, if you could let me share my screen. Okay. okay um, let's share. Yes, perfect. Let me just zoom in a bit. Um, so maybe for the ones who do not know, the visual vocabulary is not a new concept. Um, it has been inspired by the Financial Times. So they have been creating this educational poster, I would say. Um, and this has been, again, inspired by the graphic continuum, um, which is another collection of charts and some kind of grouping as well. Um, and the way how the visual vocabulary in general is structured is there are these nine categories. Let me just zoom into some of these. Um, for example, deviation. Um, and these nine categories represent this kind of data relationship you eventually want to visualize. Mm -hmm. So this visual vocabulary is kind of a guide, depending on the data that you have at hand, um, to show you which charts you could use to visualize that kind of data relationship. For example, if we take a look at the deviation group, um, deviation is when you have a data set at hand and you want to visualize some kind of variation from a fixed reference point. And these are, for example, then the four charts um, that you could use to visualize that. And the same, of course, also applies for the other categories. So correlation um, should be familiar or should be something common for data scientists, for example. But this is when you want to visualize the relationship of several variables or other variables. Um, and these are the common um, visualizations that you could use. So this was the inspiration I had. And um, for the ones that we don't know yet, but this visual vocabulary um, from the Financial Times, I think was built on D3 charts. Okay. And the version of this already exists in Tableau. Um, we can also link some of the links in the description. And this uh, dashboard also exists in Power BI. Okay. So my main motivation was to create a version using um, Plotly and Visible, uh, which again is built on top of Dash. Uh, because there was a gap for this kind of dashboard in that technology that I use daily, at least. Correct. Um, and I wanted to, first of all, else to learn myself and refresh all of my memories to create these totally charts and then have a place um, or one dashboard where you can basically find all of the code for all of these charts. Sweet. All right. So then you went ahead, created it with Visro. Um, what, as well, actually, let's actually look at the demo first of Israel because that's like, the most yes. exciting part. And then I have some questions along the way. Perfect. Um, so this is the implementation of the visual vocabulary using Plotly and um, Visual. So what you can see in the first overview homepage um, are, again, the nine groups that were also in the Financial Times. Um, and if I, for example, just switch to some of these groups, you will always see the kind of charts that I also um, basically possible for these kind of groups. Um, and you see some of the charts are currently blurred out uh, and some charts are more lighter. Um, this just means that some of the charts are basically ready and the other ones are still a work in progress. Um, but let me, for example, go to the bubble map. Um, for each of these charts, what you will always see is a section with um, what is this chart and when should this chart be used, the plotly chart itself, and you see on the right hand side um, the Python code to generate that Plotly chart and then to plug it in into a Visco dash app. So Great. this is basically always the same structure for all of the charts. 
Okay, cool. And so those, just out of curiosity, uh, do you find yourself, if you go back to the home page, do you find yourself using um, one of these tabs more more than others, like according based on the data sets you tend to use? Um, so for example, for the Figure Friday challenges, yeah. so far what we have, or what I have always been leveraging is often the spatial ones for the maps, for example. But most of the time, what I'm using is the magnitude and, of course, also the time category. So time is, for example, used if you want to visualize some kind of trends. Um, and I think given that I often create business dashboards, I often visualize time trends and then also magnitudes um, and rankings, I would say. So basically, for example, say what are the top performing products? Okay. Um, so I think um, these three categories are the ones that I most often use, but maybe for data scientists, they might use the correlation category more or the distribution one. So I think it really depends on the data at hand and then also the person that analyzes it. Yeah, and, and kind of feel they're working in, I guess. Um, yeah. And if you go, for, uh, Lee, if you go for, uh, for example, back to the spatial, yeah. um, one of the charts, whatever you clicked on bubble charts, I think it was the one you clicked on. Mm -hmm. Um, could you just explain a little, maybe zoom in a little bit, just explain a little bit for those who are not familiar with Visual, um, the code, like what, ah, what, yes. what, are, what are we seeing here? Like, it seems like very simple to create just a few lines of code and we have this beautiful chart. Walk us through some of this code. Yes, for sure. Um, let me, if I can zoom into this one a bit. Yeah, now we yes. see it perfectly. Perfect. Um, so for the ones who do not know, this is essentially a Python package as well that is open source um, and that one can just pip install. Um, and it's built on top of Dash. So the end product of this code is a Dash app. Um, what we have simplified is just some of the code to generate that app. For example, um, of course, you first import it, then you import the data set. And then um, what was important for us was to create um, a configuration language, which is intuitive. So for example, you create a page. On that page, you have a title. Components are for us everything that is visualized on the right-hand side normally. So in this case, for example, I have to find a graph. And inside that graph, I have to define a figure. And inside this figure, you can plug in any kind of plotly chart. It can be a Plotly Express, it can be graph objects. As long as it is a Plotly chart, you can plug everything in here. Um, and then you just run, or you plug in that page into your dashboard, and then you just run that, dash, that dashboard. And this is just a shortcut um, configuration language to create the Dash app itself. Nice. So very. I see a lot of similarities uh, to Dash, which is, makes sense because it sits on top of Dash. Like if you're a Dash user in, in the middle part of the uh, of the code, you would do like DCC graph, and then you would assign the Plotly Express, in this case, scatter map to the figure property. So here, the only difference is it's a VM, right? That stands exactly. for visual model graph. Um, exactly. And so if people wanted to, for example, instead of a graph, they wanted to insert their um, uh, data table or a Dash AG grid, would that be possible? That would else be possible, and it would be the same syntax. So we actually have these components already embedded as well. So instead of, for example, VM graph, you would have VM AG grid if you want okay. to then plug in your AG grid. And then the figure is your AG grid function, um, where you can customize any kind of any of these arguments as well. Um, I think if you take a look at that example, the, the true advantage of this world doesn't come in place, but I think it's more the as soon as you start creating callbacks as well. Right. where you see that it shortens the code. Okay. Now, all the tabs that you showed us here uh, with all the, uh, the types of um, data sets or graphs that you would use, it, that sits on top of New York uh, Times article as well. It's only graphs, or is there, do you envision in, in the future a certain tab that talks about like tabular data? Um, that's a very interesting one because, um, so the Financial Times and also the graphic continuum, they always say that this kind of grouping is an initial starter for, for people. So it doesn't contain all of the charts. It doesn't contain all of the relationships and links. It's, it serves more as a starter for people um, to have some kind of grouping in mind, but this is supposed to be extended. So for example, what I have in, in mind, if you take a look at all of the 
I think I saw, for example, some customization of this kind of grouping where they had another grouping called concepts. Um, and concepts were basically any kind of mind mapping visualizations, um, which currently doesn't um, exist in, in this standard or, or initial version of the visual vocabulary. Okay. But for example, these mind maps where you have like several bubbles and you have like newer links and stuff, this kind of doesn't exist yet, or like um, process charts. Okay. Um, so it's definitely something that can be extended. And I can also imagine that in the future, there will be more groups, which mm. also makes sense. Um, but tabular data, um, I think there are different use cases when you would prefer tabular data over a chart. Okay. Um, but currently, tables are not, for example, contained in the visual vocabulary. OK, that makes sense. Now, speaking about uh, the future, um, do you do you have any plans to continue working on this dashboard? Um, for sure. So this is definitely a, a work in progress. Um, one like one thing I was really excited about, we actually presented um, this in the Great Hopper conference last week, and we had two oh. people then contributing a chart to this visual vocabulary. And after I announced it on the Dash Party forums, I also had two, three people who, who wanted to contribute to this chart as well. So that being said, this is the dashboard, as you can see, some, some charts are still grayed out where the code is still missing. Um, so contributions are welcome. And this is definitely something, my end goal would be that all of these charts are at some point not grayed out, but like available. Um, and for that, I already have some people who wanted to contribute. So these are always welcome. And then I think, um, one suggestion I really liked from you was, for example, if I go to any kind of chart right now, uh, let's say the box plot. Um, currently, this code always shows the the Plotly Express chart embedded inside the Visual app. Right. But I but but you are right. So I I definitely want this dashboard to be also useful for pure Dash users. So I can imagine that we might add another tab in here with just pure Plotly code because like mm. currently people will basically have to just like copy paste that relevant section here right. um, just to simplify that process eventually and just um, insert yeah. just the pure plotly code for our pure dash users, I think would be the next step. Um, and then of course, filling all of these currently great out charts out, um, such all of these are visible. And I think one thing we also wanted to add were a bit more um, links between charts. For example, remember in our figure Friday, um, challenges, we often have actually different visualizations for the same kind of chart. Right. So this is something I also want to embed. So it's not only this is the chart and how you, and this is how you can generate it, but also these are some of the alternatives of the bar chart if you do this and this and this. Well, so um, what do you mean? If we go to the bar chart right now, you would, um, we um, would say, for like, example, do you have two graphs there? Um, I think part to whole, I think, is a good example, for example. Um, yes. For example, the tree map, right? Mm -hmm. The tree map is great if you want to show how much one part makes out of the whole piece. Yeah. But let's say, for example, I'm only interested in um, seeing the ranking. Like, what are the countries? Like, this is, for example, great in, in terms of seeing the part to whole, and it looks mm -hmm. a bit fancier as a visualization. Right. But this could be alternatively uh, visualized as a bar chart. Right. Because with a bar right. chart, you can see the magnitude of these simpler. For example, right. I wouldn't be able to tell right now how much bigger China is compared to India. Mm. Yeah. Be because it's an area that you have Good to point. compare. If right. you visualize it as a bar chart, then you only have to compare lengths, which are easier for the human eye to compare. So ideally, you would say what you would you would link this to a bar graph? Yeah. Yes. Like some alternatives for this could be, for example, the bar chart. Got it. OK, perfect. That's OK. Um, That's, so these yeah. kind of links, we also want to add more, um, more of it. Um, but yeah, I think overall, okay. um, the overall structure will probably remain the same, but more charts will be added. Eventually, we, we add more groupings. And then we will add another code tab with pure Plotly code such that um, pure Dash users can also just use that section. And not only, I think you're right, not only like a pure Dash users, but a lot of people, um, what you said about the Plotly tab, they, they don't necessarily want or need yet a dashboard. They just want a yeah. graph, right? They might have an Excel sheet. They just want to do like a graph, which is obviously perfect to use Plotly for. And then if they want to build on top of that with, uh, with uh, interactive dashboard, then obviously they could use 
uh, visual for that, and they have the code. So, um, yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Lee, how um, if people do want to contribute after watching this video, mm -hmm. uh, what link should we uh, add to the bottom of the uh, video, and uh, what what are the steps they're supposed to take to contribute? Um, so everything lives in the um, visible GitHub repository. Um, so actually, also the source code is um, freely available under the visual vocabulary um, okay. folder. I will I will add that link to you guys as well. But this is all of the source code there is. And if people want to contribute, they would contribute to this repository. Okay. Um, and the and the demo is hosted on Hugging Face, but basically the code lives here. And then I just bring over the code to Hugging Face for the deployed version. But so the would you, they would just open uh, like a pull request here? Yes, exactly. Okay, I think I think that's it, right? I, I yes. love the demo. This was a, a perfect example of what you can do with uh, Visro uh, combined on top of Plotly, and how you could build uh, beautiful, powerful, and helpful tools for the community. Uh, again, I want to reiterate, reiterate. I wish I had this when I started learning uh, Plotly and building uh, data sets with my former nonprofit organization I was working at because I was off in it. it. Took me hours to understand, wait, should I use a bar chart, a scatter plot? What is this plum? What is this, uh, what is a violin chart? Like you had no idea. And, and with this, it makes it a lot clearer. It's like a like an intro to uh, data visualization uh, with Plotly and Visro. So Lee, thank you again for, thank you for building this. Um, we're gonna add under the video for those who wanna contribute, uh, the GitHub, GitHub link to the repo. Um, uh, which also has the code. We're going to add the app link, which is live, so you can use this on a daily basis. This should be always open on your browser on one of the tabs <laughs> in case you need to use it. And uh, we'll also add um, Lee's uh, LinkedIn profile in case you want to connect with her or ask her any questions, uh, although she is very active on the forum as well. So if you want to go to the Plotly forum, we'll have a link there, and you can try to message her. Lee, thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much for Appreciate having me. It. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.